Hi everyone, it's Friday afternoon here at Cherry Hill and I hope that you've had a good week and I hope that you're looking forward to a good weekend. I hope that you'll join us on Sunday morning at 1015 right here on Facebook for the live stream of our Sunday worship service or you can view the service on our website www.cherryhillchurch.org or you can watch it Sunday afternoon or at any time for that matter on our YouTube page as well. I'm sitting here this afternoon in Memorial Parlor, and our Cherry Hill members and friends know that this is where we enjoy coffee hour Sunday with some incredible food and coffee, and then we have our Wednesday potluck dinners with unbelievable food and uh, our, our Lenten dinners, and there are, we, we do a lot of eating in this room. And it's been a while since we've had any dinners here, probably the early part of March, but we look forward to the day when we're able to enjoy good food and fellowship here in Memorial Parlor. And as I was thinking about all that, I was reminded of a story that I shared with you, gosh, five or six years ago now, but a story that one of you suggested I might use for one of these meditations. So I share it with you today, and I hope it will be a blessing for you. There once was a woman who had been diagnosed with a terminal illness and she'd been given maybe three to four months to live. And so as she was getting her things in order, she contacted her pastor and had her pastor come to her house to discuss certain aspects of her final wishes. Final wishes. People often do that. So she told her pastor which hymns she wanted sung at the service, what scriptures she would like read, even what outfit she wanted to be buried in. And the woman requested that she be buried with her favorite Bible. It was the Bible that had been given to her on her confirmation. Well, everything was in order and the pastor was getting ready to leave when the woman suddenly remembered something very important to her. She said, hold on a second. There's one more thing. What's that, came her pastor's reply. Well, this is very important, the woman said. I want to be buried with a fork in my right hand. Well, the pastor stood looking at the woman, not quite sure what to say. The woman said, that surprises you, Reverend, doesn't it? Well, to be honest, her pastor replied, I am puzzled a bit. And the woman explained, in my many years of attending church potluck dinners and church socials, I always remembered that as the dishes of the main course were being cleared from the table, someone would almost always lean over and say, keep your fork. And she said, that was my favorite part of the meal because I knew that something better was coming. Maybe it was velvety chocolate cake or deep dish apple pie or some other dis wonderful dessert. Something wonderful, something with substance was yet to come. And so I want people to see me there in my casket with a fork in my hand and I want them to wonder, what's with the fork? And then that's when I want you to tell them She's keeping her fork because the best is yet to come. Well, the pastor's eyes welled up with tears and tears of joy as he hugged the woman goodbye. He knew this would probably be the last time he got to visit with her, but he also knew that the woman had a better grasp of heaven than he did. She knew that something better was coming. The best was yet to come. And so it happened at, at the woman's funeral as people filed by her casket. They saw her in her pretty blue dress and she was there with her favorite Bible. But then they saw the fork. They asked, well, what's with the fork? And that's when her pastor said, she's holding on to her fork because the best is yet to come. And that's good for us to remember as we think of funerals and, and life after death. But you know, I think that's good advice for living our lives right now. The best is yet to come. Even after a wonderful meal, even after a wonderful life, life as good as it can be at times, even in the midst of the difficult times of life, the best is yet to come because God is with us, God is with us today, and God will be with us tomorrow. That's what gives us hope. So the next time you reach down for your fork 
after dinner, I would just encourage you, hold on to your fork, because the best is yet to come. Have a good weekend.